Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India course environmental chemistry and microbiology this this course will be taught by professor shudha goel and myself professor anjali pal we both are from civil engineering department iit kharagpur we have divided this course into two parts the first part is environmental chemistry that will be covered by me and the second part is environmental microbiology that will be taught by professor shudha goel now this is this is my 28th lecture and this is module 6 in this uh, module i i have i am covering the radioactivity Uh, chapter or nuclear chemistry as you can see here in my previous two lectures i have discussed about the fundamentals of radioactivity and in this and this this chapter this lecture i will cover the the following topics the lecture content is shown here a radioactive disintegration series nuclear transmutation artificial radioactivity and age of the ore or rocks i will discuss radioactive disintegration series as you see here that there are many radioactive elements that we know and uh, mainly among the elements having the atomic numbers from z equals to 81 to z equals to 92 in this range there exist many radio isotopes uh, by now you know what does it mean by z and uh, so uh, and what what do you mean by radio isotope so in this range there are many radio isotopes they can be grouped uh, mostly into three series okay and um, how they are uh, they are classified they are placed in this three, three series one series is defined by thorium that is 4n series another is by 4n plus 2 that is the uranium series and uh, the third one is 4n plus 3 that is the actinium series here it is shown 4n thorium 4n plus 2 uranium and 4n plus 3 actinium now what is the Uh, speciality here n is an integer obviously each series is characterized by a single long lived parent isotope and a common end product which is a stable isotope of lead so end product is for all the um, series the end product is lead but you can see here that they are isotope of lead in this case 208 that is a mass number and here it is 206 and here it is 208 and uh, what is 4n 4n plus 2 and 4n plus 3 if you divide this um, atomic mass number by 4 then you will see that there is um, it is coming as 4n in this case 4n plus 2 and 4n plus 3 okay so thorium uranium 238 and uranium 235 this is also called actinium okay actinium series now t half it is also characterized by the t half i told you that this is a very characteristic thing from um, from the um, for the radioactive uh, elements okay so this is the uh, 1.39 into 10 to the 10 years this is the half life for this one thorium and for this thorium and then this one 4.5 in 10 to the 9 years this is the half life for uh, this uranium 238 
and 7.07 in 10 to the power 8 years this is the half life for uranium 235. So, these are the three series. The separation, isolation and concentration of radioisotopes has been developed as a new field of interest. Okay. Um, so, the, when there are many radioisotopes formed it is very important to separate them, to isolate them, to uh, study their properties, to use it for other purposes. Okay. So, this is very important field. Now, this is a very important experiment done by Rutherford in 1919 nuclear transmutation. Nuclear transmutation means uh, um, that is some type of reaction by which one nucleus is transformed into another. Previous to this we did not know that one atom can be transformed into another, okay. but this is the first time Rutherford uh, did it. You see here it is a it is a famous alpha particle bombardment experiment done by Rutherford. Okay. What it did nitrogen upon bombardment with high speed alpha particle, okay. this is the source. Okay. So, from this um, this is an radio element. So, from this radio element alpha particles are coming out that alpha particle uh, high speed alpha particle um, uh, he has used to bombard the nitrogen okay. and when he did so then what happened what is the product an isotope of oxygen and proton. Okay. So, here it is shown nitrogen you know the uh, atomic mass number is 14 and atomic number is 7 and uh, this is the alpha particle uh, alpha particle uh, uh, means 4 and 2 and then uh, when uh, this bombarded here nitrogen then what we get oxygen this isotope oxygen is 16 here but it is 17. So, it is an isotope of oxygen and 8 atomic number is 8 and proton is pro, pro, produced. Okay. Although there was sufficient absorber how to understand this there was sufficient absorb, absorber to absorb the particles to absorb alpha particles. Okay. So, you know you have seen the properties of alpha particles uh, that uh, uh, it can be easily stopped. Okay. So, uh, even if there are absorbers, absorbers sufficient absorbers to absorb the alpha particles still he has observed the scintillations flashes bright flashes okay, observed on zinc sulphide screen. So, what is the reason for zinc that um, scintillation or flash these are due to the protons that is produced. Okay. So, but you know that uh, when he did the experiment when he wanted to publish it people did not believe they thought that it is the um, impurity oxygen was already there. Um, so, um, it is not produced, but it was already there. So, it, it is observed, but, um, but finally it, it is uh, seen it is observed by him it is proved by him that um, it is the product of nitrogen. Okay. So, it is called transmutation nuclear transmute one nucleus to another nucleus nuclear transmutation okay. important experiment very important experiment to understand the things. Okay. Uh, another important uh, experiment that is by Irene Curie and F Joliet okay. who are they Irene Curie who is who is she she is the daughter of Madame Curie. Okay. So, Irene Curie and her husband F Joliet, okay. they were also doing some experiment to find out the neutron okay. to on neutron. Okay. Now, they also got the Nobel prize not for neutron, but they got the Nobel prize in 1935 okay. for what for artificial radioactivity. Till now we have only seen that radioactivity is coming out from heavy nucleus and that is spontaneously it is coming out. So, it is natural natural radioactivity, but this is the artificial radioactivity. So, and how how they got it bombardment of aluminum you see aluminum with alpha particle they were doing lot of experiment that time lot of experiments radioactivity was discovered alpha particles with bombardment with alpha particles all those types of experiments are going on to find out some particles to see the behavior. 
So, they were also doing some experiments and then what they have seen what they did actually they have bombarded the aluminum with alpha particle. Okay. The alpha particle they got from the pol from polonium it is also radioactive element. So, they got that from polonium, but the, what is the observation produces neutrons and positrons along with the emission of a radioisotope of phosphorus. This is the this is the artificially produced radio isotope of phosphorus. It is artificial radioactivity. So, who artificially produced radioactive element is nothing but this one radio isotope of phosphorus. Okay. So, this is two step there are two steps and this has very uh, having half life only 3 minute okay. transient, transient existence okay. only 3 minute half life. Okay. Now, what is happening here you see that if you look into this phosphorus 30 and 15 actually for phosphorus natural isotope is 31, 31, 15, but here it is uh, radio isotope it is 30 okay. and next step you see this one is very transient existence only 3 minute half life this has converted to silicon silicon 30 and 14 okay, and positron. Okay. Positron uh, electron you write E minus positron means positive electron. So, it is written as E plus. So, here both are both neutron and positron are produced, but this is the new thing that they have observed this is nothing but isotope of phosphorus, but this is radio isotope means it is immediately it is uh, disintegrated. Okay. Following this discovery many radio elements were produced by irradiating stable isotopes with appropriate nuclear projectiles. What is projectiles? It is, they are the particles by which you can bombard some el, uh, nucleus. Okay. Say they can be proton, they can be deutron, they can be alpha particle, they can be electron, they can be neutron. So, they are with high speed they are bom bombarding the uh, nucleus they are called project um, projectiles. Okay. So, this this is the very important experiment and they got the Nobel prize for this artificial radioactivity discovery. So, in one family you see that Madame Curie got two Nobel prize and this is the third Nobel prize that came in the same family. Okay. This is Ma Madame Curie's daughter. Now, artificial radioactivity there is some mechanism that has been given by Bohr in 1936 how it is coming nucleus to be disintegrated nuclear projectile. So, they will form some compound nucleus compound nucleus, but they will uh, they will have very short they are very short lived. So, compound nucleus will be forming the product nucleus and with the emission of particles. So, this is the theory given by Bohr. Okay. The compound nucleus is very short lived okay. 10 to the power minus 14 to 10 to the minus 12 second this much very short lived. Okay. Now, this is a very important application of radioactivity. Okay. You can determine the age of a rock or ore some ore when it is produced. Okay. So, age age means when it is produced. Okay, that you can determine uh, very nice uh, concept. Okay. Uh, there are two methods I will discuss. The first method is from the say for example, it is uranium, uranium ore. Okay. So, first is uh, first is the uranium ore, uranium lead ratio. From the uranium lead ratio, you can determine the age of the rock, uranium rock. Okay. Let us consider uh, a rock containing uranium okay. is this is formed long years ago long time back it is uh, produced. The uranium started to decay following the this is the step uranium 238 is decayed to lead 206, 206 okay. Now, the half life of the intermediate members are very small compared to uranium 238 because we know that T half of uranium is this much 4.5 into 10 to the 9 years that we know. Okay. 
Now, the uranium lead ratio if we can determine chemically by chemical analysis it is very easy to determine uranium lead ratio at present how much is the uranium how much is the lead present at present in the ore that we can determine easily. Okay. So, we can determine it from that ratio it is possible to find out the time elapsed since the formation of the parent element how much time has elapsed when it is first formed and at present how much time has passed that that is the age right that is the age of the ore. So, that we can determine okay. in this way the age of the earth was also say for example, the ore is long time back it is produced it is uh, when the earth is also um, in the beginning. Okay. So, that time if it is there from that time if it is there then age of the rock and age of the earth is same. Okay. So, that way age of the earth was also estimated and uh, it is pretty close means uh, good, uh, good result was obtained to know the age of the earth. Now, let us do one problem with this particular with this topic by knowing the uranium lead ratio. So, an uranium ore contains 11.9 gram of uranium 238 and 10.3 gram of lead 206 calculate the age of the ore. So, what, what they are supplying? They are supplying the um, at present how much is the uranium and how much is the lead in the ore that is present at present how much is there. Okay. Then um, we can if we can determine at the beginning how much was there then we can easily find out the uh, time elapsed. Okay. Now, here you can see from one uranium uh, we are getting one lead okay. that is very important one uranium gives one lead. Okay. Now, this is the formula that uh, that is required to know the t the time that is passed okay, uh, elapsed. Okay. So, this this is required. So, to know this we have to know the lambda we have to know n 0 and n is already given at present how much is there n 0 we have to know. Okay. So, this way lambda is lambda we have to know. So, lambda is 0 0.693 by t half t half is given. So, we can easily find out lambda. Now, 11.9 gram of uranium 238 is now it is present. Okay. It is present now and uranium more contains gram of uranium. So, this is at present uranium concentration that is nothing but 0 0.05 mole how you are getting by dividing it by this. Okay. Now, lead at present lead is this much. So, how many moles this one. Okay. So, mole of uranium present in the ore in the start how much that is 0 time that is nothing but at present how much is there and how much lead is produced that is coming from the because the ratio is 1 is to 1 the stoichiometry is 1 is to 1. So, 0 0.5, 0.05 plus 0 0.05 that is the uh, beginning n 0 this is the n 0 value. So, you can put n 0 0.1 and n 0 0.05 that is nothing but 2. So, after putting all the values you get 4.5 into 10 to 9, 9 years that is the age of the ore. Okay. It is uh, means concept is very good application is also very good the, the calculation is very simple very simple. There is another method that is the that is also from uranium, but that is from uranium helium ratio. Okay. Uh, why helium? Because it is producing that I told you that alpha particle it is giving out alpha particle. What is alpha particle? Alpha particle is nothing but helium nucleus is not it. So, uh, helium nucleus uh, then uh, is it positively charged uh, nucleus then uh, uh, how can you know that it is helium um, you can easily find out from atomic uh, spectra. Okay. If you see the atomic spectra you will get the characteristic spectra of helium uh, atom. So, that way you can understand okay, this is the helium okay. that way actually it is detect, de detected as helium in alpha particle. Now, uh, these these are the key points that you have to remember for this. 
when an atom of uranium 238 disintegrates it produces this 8 alpha particles in the chain. Okay. So, after 8 alpha particles uh, after leaving 8 alpha particles it goes to the end product okay, lead. Now, the helium atoms are trapped within the ore and retained it is in the ore inside the ore. So, helium it is producing it is trapped in the ore it is trapped inside the ore. Okay. Now, it helps to find out the time elapsed since the ore is formed when the ore is formed and by now you can um, the time you can find out you have to know how much concentration of helium is produced how much helium is produced. Okay. From there you can know that how much time okay. now is passed find out the, uh, and another thing this method is not very accurate because some loss of helium always occurs. Some heliums by diffusion escapes out. Okay. So, some loss is there not all, but some loss is there. So, this uh, this is not that accurate, okay. but still you can get the idea. Now, what is the problem means uh, numericals you see here find out the age of the ore which contains atho cc of helium at stp and atho gram of uranium 238 t half is atho. Now, from this I have given only clue okay. you can do it by yourself you can try let us assume that x number of helium atoms are present 22.4400 22 um, 400 cc at stp is equivalent to Avogadro number of helium atoms that we know. So, this much cc at stp is how many atoms when an atom of uranium 238 disintegrates it produces 8 alpha particles for each nuclear transformation to lead 8 alpha particles are produced that you have to uh, remember and you have to use this uranium atom disintegrated how much you have to calculate uranium atoms left okay this is given contains at the helium and at the left so this is left uranium atom originally present n0 how much is disintegrated plus how much is left that will give you n 0 just like the previous one, but in this case helium that is gas. So, uh, in terms of atom you have to calculate ok. Then uh, finally, this is the equation that you have to use you have to find out the T lambda is known because T half is known n 0 you have to find out n is given n 0 you have to find out n 0 means the now it is now how much is present plus how much is disintegrated. So, how much is disintegrated that you can find out from the helium ok how much helium you are obtaining from there how much how many atoms of helium you are obtaining and for each uranium atom 8 helium atoms are produced. So, that also you have to consider. So, you can try this this is uh, very uh, means uh, interesting problem ok you can try this. Now, the references uh, references um, the same references uh, that I have already shown you uh, you can read from this book actually the, um, the the last two problems you know last two problems um, it is in some um, uh, some books you will see that it is the age of the earth it is written how to determine the age of the earth this is also called geological clocks geological clocks in clock uh, what we see is time right it is also time you are seeing how much time is gone ok. So, geological clocks it is called and age of the earth that topic title is age of the earth, but basically you are determining the age of the earth via the age of the rock means rock if you can find out if you think it is produced at that time only when earth uh, is uh, the beginning of the earth then you can tell that it is the same. Okay. So, 
very important thing. So, in this lecture um, we, uh, we have uh, means seen how the radioactive disintegration series, what are the radioactive disintegration series they are classified uh, and then we have seen the Rather's force experiment on nuclear transmutation, how one atom can be transformed into another okay, and then artificial radioactivity that is developed by Irene Curie and F. Joliet and then uh, how the age of rock or um, ore we can determine um, by using two methods and then um, which can be related to the age of the earth. So, this uh, on the basis of uh, the radioactive decay um, theory of radioactive decay and then half life and all those things that you we have learned that on the basis of that these numericals uh, we can do. Okay. So, very important for radioactive chapters. Thank you.